Welcome back everybody, this is Waste back with another video on the channel. This is going to be the 10th part of our complete mobile application development series. Here's the link to the playlist if you want to follow along from start. So we've pretty much done 9 videos, let me take you to the application. So in this video series we've been building this application uh, with Ionic and Capacitor. So let me give you a quick walkthrough. We got dashboard page, we got account page, which helps us to reset the data of the application. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna say app reset successful. Go back to dashboard, we don't see any expense there. So this application is basically is gonna help user to track their daily expenses. I'm gonna click on this plus button. It's gonna open up this model type amount, for example, 30. I'm gonna type description, this is the description you can select the type of your expense click on rent click on add and you will see an expense in your dashboard page you can add multiple expenses so this is 20 select the type i will say gift now you can filter through a date so click on this date button and i can go back to the previous date so let's just say 13 and I can see there's no data for 13. So here are some of the logs that are happening for our own debugging purposes. I'm gonna click on today and that data comes back from a local storage. So this application is using a local storage using capacitor plugins. We've done the uh, unit testing for that as well. Also, I can filter out by type. So I click on this type. I'm gonna select the type, let's just say gift, click okay. Now we should see only the expenses who has a type of gift. We got this filter, so we can filter by price. Uh, and then this recent button should go away as well. So this is like the initial state of the application. I have a plan to uh, improve this application, even add authentication system, and then add the backend server uh, implementation within this application as well. So today's agenda for this video is going to be polishing our UI and also looking at this filter, how we can filter our expenses via prices. So as you guys know, we've been using Trello. So I'm going to open Trello, which is a great application to uh, write your stories or tasks or do a bit of planning for your software development. So here we got our Trello board for expense tracker application. I'm going to create a task, filter expenses via price, okay? So let's just move this to in progress and we're gonna work on this bit. I'm gonna go back to the code. Let's just bring the Trello board somewhere here. Let's go back to the code. Now the code itself is running. I'm going to stop the server and I'm gonna run Ionic capacitor add iOS and it should say that iOS is already added so we're going to use ionic capacitor sync iOS command it's going to make a build of our code and then sync with iOS you can run this application on an Android emulator and iOS emulator I've shown you both how you can configure this project and run that into your iOS or Android now this is going to sync it I'm going to bring up uh, project explorer we got this ios which is the ios application we got this android application now it's right now it's syncing ios so i'm going to use a terminal command to open xcode and then run our application in android sorry not in android but in ios emulator so i'm going to use a command ionic capacitor run ios dash dash live reload dash dash external so this way when this is going to build our application and open up the xcode it will basically make sure that we whatever the the code changes we do in a pytorm it will reflect that in in our native code so i'm just gonna do uh full screen uh i was in a full screen so i just uh, disabled that you might be able to see my task right now. And here you go, we got an Xcode opening. And I'm gonna go and open this application in one of the emulators. So by default, we're selecting this iPhone 11. I think this should be fine. I'm gonna just click on this play button or the shortcut key is uh, Command R. 
and obviously you can't have a X code on a window so I can't really tell you the Windows shortcut key here anyways uh, we're just gonna wait for this to launch once that's done then we're gonna bring up our emulator right here and then we can see the changes that we do the only problem with uh, running and debugging application within the emulator is that you cannot actually see the logs you're gonna go to Xcode to see the logs or you're gonna have to open Safari to see the logs so right now here you can see the logs okay so our application is running in iphone 11 emulator i can click on the type go to filter so it's bringing up this action sheet for now we are going to just filter our expenses by price so we don't really need to show this action sheet for now i know we spend a bit of time creating this so i'm going to go back to uh, pycharm and i'm going to click on this on button element and let's get rid of that function now once we got rid of that function the application should auto reload and we should not see that filter anymore i'm going to go to one of the ionicons website and here we're going to find a dollar symbol so i'm going to use logo usd so let's find usd okay this is a dollar and i'm going to copy this let's go back to our code and within this button i'm going to paste that now we should see a dollar symbol instead of this uh, you know filter so another icon that i need is going to be some sort of like an arrow up and down arrow so i'm going to let's say this one should be fine so I'm going to say carrot down let's copy that and we are going to paste that here actually not this one but we actually didn't copy this so I'm going to copy let's go back and then get rid of this line and then paste that here now we should have that card symbol now it's not going to come up because it's not available in our source code so that's another issue that i've been facing so instead of that we probably better off using something like arrow down so let's try it out because i don't want to download this svg and put that into the assets folder so if you're facing this issue then you can download that svg go to assets and then paste the icon here for example here we got this pencil outline svg icon which i had to copy paste for the edit but i don't want to do that for now so i'll just paste this arrow down outline and let's see if that's working no it's not working probably it's about outline so just the arrow down there you go we got this arrow down now i'm going to go to this one what is this it's arrow up okay let's create another one and we're going to change the name to up so we got two of them okay so now if i go and click on one of these i should be able to show one of the icon if it's filtered or if it's not filtered okay Let's go and add some expenses. Let's click on a plus button and I'm going to add a $50 expense. I'll say this is the description. And I'm going to select a type as games. Click on add. We got the expense there. Click on plus button. We add a $30. And select the type, whatever you like. Click on add. Another one. I would like to add a $40 okay so here we're going to use simple description and let's add something like gift click on add and now we got three expenses i would like to filter them out by price so first of all i'm going to go to dashboard page and i'm going to create a variable okay i'll just say filter by price set a type to boolean Let's save the file and we're going to create a function at the bottom here. Uh, maybe we can create here. So I'm going to create price filter function and that's not going to return anything. So in this function, we are going to first of all access 
this dot expenses equal to this dot expenses and we're going to use a javascript sort function and it's going to take a function there which require a compare function that would be a and b and that returns zero now in this case we don't see any error now we're going to write a logic here so first say if a dot amount greater than b dot amount then we can return minus one okay oh, let's just do one so say if a dot amount less than b dot amount then we return minus one okay now in this case let me just identify it properly so i need to use the greater sign symbol here okay now we're going to use this function in our dashboard page so here we have this dollar sign and i would like to show if the price by filter is executed so at the bottom here i'm going to set this dot filter by price to true let's save the file and now we're going to go and use this in our dashboard component go to the dashboard component html file and here on this button i'm going to call a click event filter by so it's price filter and then here i would like to actually get rid of this bit and i'm going to use something like an operator so we'll say a filter by price true then we can have a name as arrow up so i'm just going to use arrow dash up otherwise none if i click on this dollar symbol it's not doing anything if i click on type actually our application is is stuck in amuleta so we're better off testing that in a browser we got three expenses thirty dollar twenty dollar and seventy dollar if i click on this button it's not actually doing anything let me just reload the page let's click on this it's not doing anything right now okay let's go and uh revisit our price filter functions so here we can see that we are passing this you know compare function to sort function of javascript array oh yep here we need to say it's b a and also here we need to return a minus one and not just leave that there and here once we click on this bit it's filtering now 70 30 20 also we can see the you know icons coming up as well i would like to improve this functionality i want to make sure that if i click it again it should filter by price with the lower on the top so let's go back to our price filter function and i'm going to set a variable right on the top so here we have a variable filter by price which is a boolean and i'm going to say filter by price up and that would be a boolean as well now i'm going to go down and i'm going to ch check here so if i am going to say this dot filter by price up and i'm going to say if that's you know available if that's true and then we are going to uh, return minus one actually one otherwise return minus one the same thing we are going to say this dot filter by up check it and we're going to return minus one one okay now once we're done we are going to this dot filter by price up I'm going to toggle that this dot filter by uh, price up now this might be confusing to you but let's test it out so if I go here I'm going to click on this button and it's filtering up if I click it again it should filter with the lower price now so I can toggle on between these prices okay as you can see but the problem is the icon is actually not changing so we go here in the dashboard page and here's our null value. I'm going to say filter by price. If it's true, 
then arrow up otherwise return arrow down now let's test it out okay now we got a bit of uh, error there with arrow down yep we're missing this single code that's not a problem okay so now we got this arrow down and it's there by default if I click on this it's gonna change this to arrow up change that go to arrow down but it actually always there okay I'm going to use this and filter by price as well so if both is true then it should show this uh, you know arrow now if I refresh still arrow is there so we might have a problem here so I'm better off using ng if and I say filter by price and now our logic should work out so here we got this dollar symbol if I click on that it's gonna filter you know by price by up and then if I click in it's gonna filter there okay filter by price by down so that's looking good okay so finally we have completed our minimum viable product well minimum viable product is something that we have a basic functionality in our application at this stage we can filter by date filter by type filter by price up and down you can switch between dates and always come back to today's date by clicking on today button in accounts we have a button to reset the data so our application is looking good we can add expenses and reset which is used to clear the data so our minimum viable product is ready in the next video we are going to work on improving the ui also i will show you how you can install this application to android using an apk uh, obviously we will learn how to generate apk and if you have a mac computer i will show you how you can install this application into iphone or any ios device like ipad okay so that's about it if you like the video subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up and i'll talk to you guys in the next one cheers